Hey there, we're gonna get started here in just a moment. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to my studio and to another episode of The Painter's Life. I'm Mary Gilkerson, and today we're gonna to be talking about the final creativity hack in our series. We're gonna talk about number seven, follow your curiosity. So curiosity can be um, a really important driver in making art. There's, there's a lot behind having a strong driving force in making your paintings in driving and motivating your curiosity and your creativity. But some of them I hear talked about are just not gonna work as well as others. You know, the idea of painting for the market or painting for your passion, which should you pick? Before we dive into that though, I wanna be sure to invite you all to a new live workshop I have that's gonna start tomorrow, The Rise of the Thriving Artist. It's a three-day live workshop starting Wednesday, this Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. And on that, I'll be sharing how you can use the creation of an online platform to help go from struggling and overwhelmed to thriving and making an impact with your art. To join us, you just wanna click the link that's up above. So you can get more info on it or go ahead and register for the live training. During that training, um, we'll be meeting at the same time each day. We'll do it on Wednesday at four, Thursday at four, and the following Monday at four. The replays will be available to those who register afterwards. So I hope to see you there. But now let's dive right back into thinking about how we can create that strong driving force in making our paintings. So one side for the market, painting for the market. I know a lot of people who try to do this. It's painting what you think people want, what you think people are now buying. The problem with that is it lacks passion, doesn't have any emotional connection. And the reality is, People buy for the emotional connection that they have in an artwork, and then they justify it later with logic. But without that emotional connection, they're probably not gonna buy. So painting for the market, to the market, is a real big thorny path to follow. The second suggestion that I hear a lot of people make is that you should paint what you're passionate about. There's some problems with that too. What if you don't feel super passionate about anything? Or you're just not sure what it is that you feel the great passion about? So to paraphrase Elizabeth Gilbert, we don't feel passion all the time, every day. That if we did, we'd burn out. But we do and can feel curious every day. And that's the ticket. That's the real kernel the the source creative hack for this episode because curiosity feeds things in a way that passion just never will it can't long term curiosity is sustainable curiosity can keep going over the long haul and if you pay attention to the curiosities that you run into on a day-to-day -day basis they can become the markers along the path to finding that deeper passion that might become a lifelong driving force. So you need to practice self-awareness. That's one of the best ways to find those curiosities. Signs of, of something that's a curiosity or something that is, is gonna hold your attention, a racing mind. So if your mind is just filled with thoughts and that you're, it's going 90 miles an hour and you have a hard time falling asleep at night because you're thinking about these things so much, that's curiosity. If it's absorbing your conversations to the point that you're probably boring your friends and family, that's a curiosity. If it makes your heart race a little bit, that's a curiosity. If you feel excitement, that's a curiosity. 
Do you notice how those kind of sound like some of the elements of falling in love, that precursor to love, the, the, the intriguing part? That's what curiosity is. It's intrigue. It's the stuff that becomes an absorption. And what happens when you become absorbed with something, when you follow your curiosity like that, is it allows you to deepen your focus. And it's in that deepened focus, passion really comes. So what to look for? What sparks those, those curiosities? What is it that leads to those? What is it that leads to being intrigued? Pay attention to patterns there, the patterns that might form over different subjects. And one way to do that is to either journal or to sketch on a regular basis so that you can kind of document those patterns, especially in a sketchbook. You can see the visual relationships between things. But if writing works better for you, do that. It doesn't really matter which form you approach as long as you do it, because that's where you're going to begin to recognize those patterns. Really at the heart, though, you want to hold on to that element of play. Play is a key side component of curiosity. It's that childlike fascination. So I'd kind of add that in, even into the definition. You want to look for the things that you find intriguing, what excites you, that allows you to feel like it's effortless, that it is something that absorbs you like play did as a child. Keep that element of play in there and nothing will become so precious that you're afraid of failure. So that play element is super important in there. This is really how you create deeply compelling paintings. Remember at the beginning I said that people don't buy based on their logical mind. People buy art, people follow artists based on an emotional connection. And what sparks that emotional connection is curiosity. So if you want to make compelling paintings, start following your curiosity and include that element of play. That's how you're going to move beyond just making technically good paintings. That's the second stage of the painter's path. So the first stage is learning how, just the technical practice of making paintings. How do you make paintings that have good compositions, good designs, all of those elements? That's the first part of it. But just learning to be technically proficient is not enough to become a successful painter and have a thriving impact on the world. You've got to develop that element of emotional connection that's pulled off of the painter's inner game, that's based on creativity. So if you take all of the creative hacks that we've talked about throughout this series and you follow along with those, you're gonna to begin to pay attention to your curiosities. You're gonna to begin to be able to move towards that second stage of making paintings that are not just technically proficient, but are also emotionally compelling, that draw in and attract your ideal collectors. And ideal collectors are simply the people who share your curiosities, who share the same intrigues and interests that you do. And that emotional connection that you create is how you move them from being followers to collectors. We're gonna talk a lot more about that in the upcoming workshop. And those, those stages, those three stages, moving from proficient artwork to compelling artwork to deciding what your impact is gonna be on the world and attracting those ideal collectors, that's all part of the painter's path. It's one of the things we talk about in my signature course, The Painter's Path. We're gonna be opening that up October 11th, a little bit later. But I really do want to make sure that you all know that you're invited first to that live three video workshop that's going to be starting tomorrow on Wednesday the 2nd. Click the link above for more information and hope to see you there. 
So let me grab any questions that people might have that might have come in on the Facebook feed here. So I'm gonna make sure I answer any questions people have about curiosity. It's one of my favorite ways to really spark creativity. Facebook's being slow to load there. So, hey, Carlos. And Susan says, as I was sh um, shelling this past week at Sanibel Island, I found shells that I saw images in that I could add paint to to make things, the things I saw in them. I would paint the shells and paint them into the things you saw in them. So that's a really great example, Susan, of finding something that's really intriguing to you right now, picking up the shells, and then seeing the forms that the shells imply inside of them. So I would write about that a little bit, sketch a little bit about that. But that sounds like it could be a great next series of paintings that lights your fire that gets you excited and intrigued about getting in there to the studio to paint. Um, Janet, the link to the video is right up above in the caption. So you may have to click the more button to get there, but I can drop it here into the comments too. Let me grab that. And I will drop it right here as a, oops. It's not gonna let me do that without, shoot. It's not gonna let me do that real easily. I'm gonna write it, put it here in the comments. That should work. There you go. So it's in the caption up above, but you have to click the more button to make it drop down. But I've also put it there in the comments as well. So the, the link to register um, is just marygilkerson.com forward slash rise. marygilkerson.com forward slash rise. To join in for the rise of the thriving artist. And let me see, I'm gonna have to pull this up on my phone so that I can actually see the questions because Facebook's doing a great job as it frequently does of hiding the questions so that I can't see them all. It drives me crazy when it does that. It's one of those little tricks that Facebook does that is not one of its most attractive features. So let's see if I can make it show me the comments right now. Why is it not doing that? It is being obnoxious and hiding all the comments. And I can actually see the questions because Facebook's there it goes. Now I've got them. So excellent. There we go. Hey, Janet, I hope you can join in with us on that. And Laura, glad to see that you're going to join in with us. Cool. Excellent. Glad that you're going to be there. And hey, Pete Zeller, it's good to see you. And Nicole, good to see you. Um, and hey, Margie, how are you as well? So, um, and Irene, so if you, if you want to join in on the live broadcast tomorrow, be sure to follow that link, marygilkerson.com forward slash rise. And then you will be all signed up. You'll get the replay recordings once we go live and you'll get access to some of the other good freebies that we've got coming down the pike for everybody who's participating in the workshop. So let me know if you have any other questions, drop them here into the comments and I'll be scrolling back through them later. But in the meantime, happy painting y'all. And remember, follow those curiosities. Take care. Bye-bye for now.